Here I go singing low Bye, bye, Blackbird Where somebody waits for me Sugar sweet and so is she Bye, bye, Blackbird No one here can love or understand me But what heart my stories they all Some, some strange places for us. I mean, we played in a lot of a lot of groups. So we, we ran into uh, Andy Scott, who's who's filming, who's doing some videography for local cable access here. Uh, we've been knowing him for quite a long time from the from Access Channel in, in Madison and so forth. We played with a lot of groups. You probably heard of uh, Harmonious Whale and uh, one of our maybe some, not some others common faces in the the Moon Gypsies. The Bird Brothers, I notice, are, are regulars here. I'm sort of an auxiliary Bird Brother. I, I sit in when John can't do it. Sometimes he plays a trio. And I think uh, Larry is who suggested that I contact the fine folks here. Oh, and Lisa. We're glad to be here. Here's a tune by uh, one of our favorite jazz people, Mr. Thelonious Monk. Now, granted, this song is uh, kind of meant to be taken with liquor. So we'll show you how we do that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gypsy Jazz. Um, I love Gypsy Jazz. You any Django Reinhardt, Stephen Grappelli fans out there? Uh, yeah. There's a butt in there. There's a there's a butt in there. But I, I well, there I said it. There's a butt. Um, I suppose here's one that uh, uh, <laughs> those guys that uh, the Hot Club of France would play. They they played this a lot. Cool tune called Honeysuckle Rose. <laughs> Man, that honey fairy drips your confection, goodness 
students so we, we have been teaching online and that's that's been really good yeah, it's really fun when the when they're trying to play something and you're trying to hear it to see whether they've got it or not and then it freezes and then when it comes back it plays faster for a little bit so you have no idea whether their timing was any good or <laughs> and of course all the young students they figured out that they can pretend to freeze they can go like that, and you know, you're 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 this old person. You're just pushing buttons, and things are just you know. And you go, oh, I, I'm on to you, Mister. I got you. Oh, yeah. So we gotta we gotta start making a dent in all these instruments. Part of our rule is uh, is that if we bring it, we have to play it, or else we just have to leave it. That's just the way it works. So pay attention. You may end up wind up with a ukulele. Yeah. 
we left a lot of steel in Philadelphia at one time. We did. That was unintentional. That's a key point you learn early in your career. Really be friendly to the sound guy because if you forget something, that's who's going to send it back to you halfway across the country. I didn't expect to see that ever again. So this is a, oh, you're going to know this. Actually, you won't know this one at all. This is one of our tunes. I was like, what are you talking about? We have, a, we have an EP we recorded a couple of years ago. And this is a tune of ours that we thought was uh, it's very autobiographical. It's called Lazy. <laughs> you know, blind, if you play blues or jazz, or um, 
one-eyed, I don't know, that's, I guess that's more pirate tunes. Uh, lemon? You know, you have some name like, anyway, we'll work on it. If you have any suggestions, just keep them to yourself, okay? Fats Waller. Jazz guitar and jalopy. Thanks, I went to Jimmy. 
a couple times. <laughs> How was it? It was a quick trip. Shame to meet you. Mary, I knew it was true love. Mary and I have been married for 30 some years. 30 some years. And um, when we first started playing together, we've been playing in bands together for, for 35 years or more. And uh, early on, I blew out one of my amps. It was a kind of a crappy old PV amplifier, if any musicians out there, you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, but I knew it was true love. She had a beautiful uh, guitar, much like that, that she traded, she, she sold for me to buy, actually to buy a crappy PV old, old Yeah, that's right. I, I don't know why I didn't keep the guitar. I wasn't really playing much of the time. But yeah. But a few years ago, maybe two, three years, three years ago, we were in a music store. It was around Christmas time. And, and it was payback time. And we, yeah. And musicians, you know, we make, make pacts with each other before we go into the in music the store. Line. In the parking lot. Nope. Can't buy anything. Not gonna buy Not anything. Day, can't happen. And of course, we walked in and that guitar was hanging on the wall and Mary sort of levitated and was like, <laughs> right over there. And uh, we could not pry it out of her hands. And so we went home with us. And when he started looking for the case, I started relaxing. <laughs> so I think she maybe that has par partially forgiven me. We'll see. Partially. 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 Oh, and you're probably wondering, why can't he stop singing and she start singing? I think that's a very good idea. Well, okay. She sings a lot prettier than I do. This is Taint Nobody's Business. There ain't nothing I can do, nor nothing I can say. That folks don't criticize me But I'm gonna do just as I want to anyway I don't care if they all despise me If I should take a notion To jump into the ocean Take nobody's business If I do That's your mind I let my best companion drive me right into the canyon. Ain't nobody's business if I do. If I should get the feeling to dance upon the ceiling, ain't nobody's business if I do. Rather than persecute me, I choose that you should shoot me. Ain't nobody's business if I do. I give him my last nickel and it 
please me. You don't need a pickle. It ain't nobody's business. It ain't nobody's business. No, it ain't nobody's business if I do. Nobody's business. and Ross? Uh, we just got recently turned on to them. I should have, uh, we should have been paying attention all along. Uh, we, uh, I, was been in, I started the group uh, Harmonious Whale with Sims and Maggie many, many years ago, and then we, I moved on to different things, and Mary and I played. But uh, we did a lot of stuff from in that vein, and, uh, but man, they are still, if you put them on, they're as good as any, ever. And fresh is French too. Killer. They were just so good. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna do the song and it's not gonna be like their version. No. But I like their version so much that I'm thinking about I don't think we can do it because we don't have a <laughs> another singer. We don't have a Hendrix. Yeah. But if you're if you're interested, their first album they put out is called Lambert, Hendrix and Ross. They do a version of this tune that we're about to do that I've never we've never heard anybody do like it. It's just a, it's pretty amazing. It's really cool. You'll know this one. Daddy's rich, and 
know my mom's good looking. So hush, little baby, don't you cry. One of these mornings, you're gonna rise up singing. Then you'll spread your wings and you'll take to the sky. So hush now, baby, don't you cry, don't you cry, don't you cry. So this, um, the next song we're going to do, um, when we play it, some people think we should be doing steampunk shows, oh. because it's about a steam-powered aeroplane. John Hartford, any John Hartford fans out there? He's a fiddle yeah. player who dances on a board, and banjo. or he did. So one day we had this gig in Milwaukee, and they decided to put us on the side of the fireplace where the people were not. So in our, in our wiseness, our drummer started playing this beat, and we said, oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. So, so it took this in a whole different direction. Yeah.
I went and stayed in an army, didn't go back again. Didn't go very fast on a steam powered airplane. The wheels went around and up and down and inside and then back again. Well, sitting on the 747, just watching them clouds roll by. Can't tell if it's sunshine or if it's rain. I'd rather be sitting on a deck chair high up over Kansas City. A mighty genuine old fashioned all of that steam powered airplane. He actually wears a bowler hat and he plays banjo and makes a lot of And he was lucky enough, and well, we make our own luck, right? We, we often do. He moved down to Nashville, he and his wife, and it turns out that he ended up, uh, they ended up buying a house by happenstance that was next to John Hartford's estate, right on the Cumberland River there. And he ended up playing with the, the band. John Hartford's old band members kind of fell in love with Colin, and, that's, and he started playing at all the great places down there. Just because, and not because he was copying Hartford, just because he's a wonderful musician in his own right, really. Yeah, he's not in our family, but we can actually travel together. We found on the stomach flu tour in Michigan. <laughs> that's another story, which you want to relate with. You can ask us about it. Hey, that's a, that's a good because I was worried that if we didn't get to this instrument that someone might notice and I'd have to leave it, give it away. My first guitar was a recording king, and then they, they, they remade these, and this is a recording king lap skin. In the 30s. There's a, there's a band called um, Caravan Gypsy Swing Ensemble that you may have heard around. They may have played here, I don't know. A good friend of ours is in that group. And I bring it up because Chris plays uh, now Hawaiian guitar. And he plays, um, he's actually the, now the president of the, of the National Hawaiian Guitar Society. Yeah. Just, just happened that Chris is a fantastic Hawaiian guitar player if you ever get the chance to see him play. I think he just goes now by at Christo and the uh, um, Hawaiian Novelty Orchestra or something like that. But I don't think they do the song. We have to do the song for the chickens. We do the song for the chickens. Chickens are lonely, and you need to talk to them sometimes. They have a lot to say. Ain't nobody here with this chicken. 
to the top yeah. just came off. It just ex <laughs> it exploded, so that happens. So maybe when this one's 80 or 90, it'll... <laughs> this is another one of our favorite, we, we say that about everything. We do this with our students, though, and this is my favorite song. And so sometimes they call us on us, like, you know, you said that about pretty much every song. And then you if know. you're in an interview and somebody says, what's your favorite song, you go, oh. oh. That's a hard one. But this is uh, one of our favorite composers, songwriters, Mr. Harry Nielsen. That's right.
Sims and Maggie from Harmonious Whale. I don't know how they did it. They, they made it they, for years. Oops, I don't know what I'm um, they tour, they all go, they, they go to Ireland a couple times a year, I think. They had raised two wonderful sons, and the kids would travel with them. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. And, you know, and they would often, the, the, the guys, their young boys, would tell us stories about they'd go to Ireland and They'd, they'd, during the gig, during the show, they fall asleep on a sack of rice in the back room there. And that's a life. He's worried about traveling with a dog. We're gonna get a dog, Mary. I know that. Gonna get a dog. Gonna get a dog. But uh, Sims and Maggie dubbed us early on. They dubbed us the Childless Bastards. We're good friends. This is our last tune for you. Thank you so much for coming down here. We're called Gaines and Wagner. Barry Gaines here on the guitar and the cello. And Chris Wagner on all that stuff. I don't have to name them, but... <laughs> the end with this uh, lovely, another Harry Nielsen tune.